I come from Galway, which is uh, just south of County Mayo. And um, I came up here to the camp initially in 2005. Um, I heard at that time, I was concerned about what I was hearing about the, um, the gas giveaway. And I wanted to come up to see for myself. I suppose I heard about Crossbar 5 in 2005. I was working in Galway. Um, working in Galway in a normal, normal job. And saw a few posters and saw a few protests and so on. But wouldn't have been inclined to get involved in, in anything kind of protest, protest related. I've been kind of involved in kind of a bit of environmentalist, like as far as kind of recycling things goes and kind of small bit of awareness, but I was never involved in a, in a group. And I saw the baton charge on YouTube in 2006 and thought I had to come for a look to see what was going on. So when I got back, the, um, I saw an ad for the gathering in 2007 and I came up. And yeah, I was, I was blown away, I couldn't believe it. My, my reality was, was totally shattered. The reason I came to the Rosscourt Solidarity Camp was because I was totally inspired by the local community campaign and struggle against Shell. It's been going over 10 years now and uh, I believe we've got a good chance of winning or at least um, delaying them as much as possible and making them um, think again before they affect a community like they've done here. Yeah, you get the, you get the impression that it's like a bunch of lunatics. Like, um, if you listen to the corporate media, and that's all you have to go on really, unless you're involved. Um, so I come from a great weekend and met really, really nice people, people that could really identify with. And then I saw the, some of the footage again from the baton charges and the protests and it was really upsetting because I realised that now the people who had seen it before but now actually recognised all the people in it and, and knew the people and so it was a lot more, a lot more upsetting like, um, and that was probably the biggest kind of change for me. Yeah, I was just really shocked about what was going on up here. And then soon after that, the, the Rossport Five were jailed. So a big campaign started that summer, and we were very much involved in that around the country. And I also spent a good deal of the summer here. And then um, in the next, in the following months after that, um, yeah, I just fell in love with the place. The things I like best about the camp is how, how we organise, I guess. Um, it's different from other protest camps I've been on because we have a, a clear set of guidelines which everyone that visits the camp um, must agree to. And that's just to make it life easier to work with and uh, it avoids um, any difficulties. Um, so uh, we have the safe space policy as well, which I think really helps new people come to the camp because they, they can just come and know that they're going to be welcomed and their opinions are going to be um, taken um, as anyone else is. So we try and organise them hierarchically and with consensus decision making. And we do that because it works. Okay, so this is the kitchen Mackie. This is where we obviously cook, everyone cooks together. Uh, we take it in turns, we have a, a board where everyone signs up and we all eat together just behind you there. Uh, this is kind of, I suppose, the, the, the common space that we have as well for, like everyone has individual tents on the camp. Uh, but this is where people can kind of come and hang out during the day and stuff as well when they're not busy. Looking after the, the structures on the camp, uh, looking after repairing boats and things like that, getting ready for uh, actions and, you know, like, as, as people will know, like, we have regular protests and actions, but they take a lot of planning and preparation, so that would be a large part of our days as well. We'd also be in regular contact with the local communities. And um, then we try to kind of be a bit of a, a base and a link with people who come in um, to, to link in with the community. And I think we have a fairly good relationship with the local community now. Um, and they've been really generous and uh, really supportive um, of us. And it's, it's inspiring to work alongside them. At the camp we try and leave as light and ecological footprints as possible. So we try and recycle all our waste, we minimise as much packaging we get at, at the start. Um, we grow some of our own veg in the garden and we produce our own electricity uh, by wind and solar. And then we, we compost all our waste, in, including, including toilet waste. Um, so behind me there is uh, a windmill that we built earlier in the year. Um, so we ended up after a week with, with a, a 700 watt windmill. And there's no wind now, but when the wind does blow, it powers everything. Uh, in the house, uh, otherwise we've got uh, photovoltaic solar panels um, to supplement it. So in the house it can run all our lights, um, phone charging, uh, battery drill charging, uh, 
uh, a dehumidifier, a uh, behoover, short periods of toaster and sometimes kettle. I feel um, a deep sense of solidarity with people across the world that are also fighting international, uh, especially oil and gas companies. And so what we're doing here, um, hopefully um, we're raising awareness about what's happening in the Niger Delta and in Latin America and in Canada with the Tar Sands campaign as well. So for me it's, it's seeing this as a, a global struggle as well as supporting a local really inspiring campaign that are completely committed to it and, and just watching people organise together and uh, take non-violent direct action against this company. Um, that's just been fantastic and I'm so pleased to have um, been welcomed into this community. As one of the locals put it recently, I think that um, once you're here and you see the beauty of the place, it's just, you know, it, it kind of gets, it goes into your heart. Mm -hmm.